Nestled in the western region of Massachusetts, the Berkshires offers a perfect blend of natural beauty and cultural attractions. It's never easy. Welcome to the beautiful Berkshires, a trip that promises you to want to be coming back and explore more. That bitter feeling, no sugar coating that, it'll knock you down. Take a stroll through one of the many scenic parks and enjoy the picturesque views of the rolling hills and winding streams. And don't forget to explore the charming small towns and villages with their quaint shops and local flavors. Indulge in the vibrant art scene with world-class museums and galleries showcasing some of the world's finest art. Something new to fall into, and it'll be a better one. There will be another. There will be another one. So it's 8.30 in the morning, and uh, 8.40 actually, and uh, we're here in the foothills of the Berkshires. Um, I'm gonna do, a, I got a big loop here. I'm not sure, it's about 130 miles of the, the loop that I plan on today. So right now we're in uh, Plainfield, um, heading west on uh, 116. I head north to Adams, head down to the south to Stockbridge, maybe make a couple stops there. Um, yeah, but the plan is just like yesterday up in the Mohawk Trail, just see what we can see. Do a little drive around uh, the hills, um, see some sights, hike, hit a trail or two maybe. Um, but yeah, just here enjoy the Berkshires. It's early fall. Um, the leaves are starting to change. I'm hoping next week or two they'll be changing. Uh, head up north to New Hampshire, the White Mountains area, uh, next couple days. Um, but yeah, right now we're just gonna um, explore the uh, Berkshire Hills. Mountains, hills, I'm not sure what they are, but uh, yeah, we're gonna make the best of it. And uh, yeah, just see what we can see. All right, see you in a bit. Here to relax and unwind, or to immerse yourself in the local culture, the Berkshires have something for everyone. So sit back and join me on an unforgettable journey, and welcome to the Berkshires. stop here on a 116 going through the Berkshires the three sister sanctuary um, yeah it's a pretty cool stop a little trend a little folky I would say but uh, yeah it's pretty cool got some bicycles up here um, yeah just art everywhere it's a pretty neat little little place the barn got some trophies up in the window um, nobody here by next door residence. Okay. Yeah, pretty interesting little place. Looks like art everywhere. It's pretty neat. Looks like they do uh, little shows back there. It's pretty cool. Let's go around the other side and see what they got over there. Yeah, today we're. Um, Head up 116, gonna head towards Adams and uh, just look at the Berkshire Hills. But uh, I saw this thing on the side of the road called Three Sister Sanctuary and had to stop. It says, uh, please share on social media. Here we go. If 
Here's the uh, front of the building, got a little tin man up there. It's pretty cool. Nutcracker, standing stones. Pretty interesting place. Oh, grotto back there. Bunch of seats. Looks like it's uh, ten dollars to go in. Um, got a walking stick here. Yeah, pretty neat. For grotto, little bell up there. It says, uh, Three Sisters Sanctuary is a creation of environmental artist Richard M. Richardson and is named in honor of his three daughters. A place to heal and embrace life through art and nature. Pretty cool. This is the... Tin Man of Gosher, right here. <laughs> Tin Man of Gosher. Yeah, it's a pretty neat little stop. It is seven o'clock in the morning, so nothing's open yet. But we're gonna keep on going. Got a lot of the hills to see. But yeah. Three Sister Sanctuary here in Goshen, Massachusetts. Stop here in a little town called Spruce's Corner um, just to see the schoolhouse of 1874. Quiet little town. <laughs> Not much here. Schoolhouse. Lots of farmland. But let's see if we can see inside this thing. We'll walk around real quick. See what's back here. Yeah. Schoolhouse. Built in 1874. Pretty cool. Not sure the electricity was there, but probably added after. Yeah. Continuing west on to uh, 116. Um, we just passed Savoy. A uh, little small farming community here, but um, the next town we're gonna head into is Adams. Um, Adams used to be a one of the main industrial park cities and towns out here, um, but. Uh, when the Mohawk Trail was put in and all the roads, Route 2 north of it, Adams kind of split into two. North Adams, which we went to um, in the last video with Mohawk, and then Adams. Adams felt a little slighted, uh, getting bypassed by all that tourist traffic and stuff like that. But uh, we're gonna head into Adams now and uh, just look around. 
and uh, from there we'll take a uh, um, turn left, head south along 8, head towards Stockbridge, head through Cheshire, and uh, but yeah, right now we're next to town we're coming to is Adams, and uh, yeah, just look around there for a little bit, and uh, I think there's a sign there, it's, it gives a little slight to North Adams, so let's see if we can find that. Alright, so we're just outside of uh, Adams, and uh, behind me you can see the uh, memorial, I mean the yeah, up top of Mount Greylock, but this is the, uh, the Friends Meeting House. It was built in 1782 by Quakers who had uh, come from Smithfield, Rhode Island, and Dartmouth in 1769. Um, but yeah, this was an old meeting house in the mid-1700s. Pretty cool. Kind of in the middle of a cemetery right now, but it is what it is. I guess we'll walk around it. <laughs> Looks like it's been uh, kept up pretty good. But, okay. I'm not sure when it's open, but, um, yeah. Top of Mount Greylock. Cool. All right, next stop. So that was cool back there. Uh, I'm just leaving Adams now. Uh, couldn't find the sign that kind of threw shade at uh, North Adams, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. A small town. Um, the library there was pretty neat. It's an old uh, meeting hall for the old Grand Army of the Republic, about 1890. A lot of the old veterans were having getting places to meet, and uh, um, uh, North Adams had their library. Uh, Adams didn't have theirs. So they built that, the uh, veterans of the Civil War uh, built that library with funds from the government with McKinley, who had visited here, um, who was an old Civil War veteran himself. Um, so it was pretty cool to see an, uh, an actual hall of the Grand Army of the Republic. Um, couldn't go in, it wasn't open at the time, but um, yeah, still a pretty neat library. On the outside it had, uh, on top it had Lincoln, Grant, and um, uh, Washington uh, in the uh, stone of the building, so it was pretty neat. Um, but yeah, wish I could have got in. It would be pretty cool to see. I guess the hall is pretty much original to what it was when it was built back in the uh, 1890s. So, but now, now we're heading uh, south on eight to um, Cheshire and uh, get on this drive. And uh, yeah, let's. Uh, yeah, the rocket. is noisy and that's all right
That's a big cheese press right there. Those ladies that we just saw said there's a replica of the cheese down there. So we have to go check it out, I guess. Uh, this is a memorial to John Leland. All right, let's go, look at this. Let's go find this big piece of cheese. It says Cheshire. I wonder if that has anything with the Cheshire cat and his cheese. I don't know. That'd be pretty cool. That is a big All right. So we're here in uh, downtown Cheshire. We just saw the press, cheese press. And now we're going to see the. Um, um, oh. All right, respect here. This is a little plaque to Daniel Petitori, Green Beret, killed in action in Kandahar on December 5th, 2001. Oh. All right. But anyway, yeah, up here is a cheese. They say it was presented to uh, Thomas Jefferson. So... Let's see if we can find this cheese. Nah, not too hard. It's a big clump of cheese. <laughs> but nice path here. I'm not sure how far this trail goes, but it seems to go pretty far. There's the cheese. One thousand two hundred and thirty-five pounds, presented to President Thomas Jefferson, January first, eighteen o two. Huh? That is a big hunk of cheese. Oh, there's something on the back of it. Rebellion to tyrants, obedience to God. Well, that was an interesting stop. All right, let's go and uh, head on back down uh, Route 8. I'm not sure what the next town is, but I'm sure it's pretty cool. I like the small little towns. You got a little ice cream shop right there. It's not open yet, obviously. It's still pretty early in the morning, but yeah, let's get back on the road. Got a lot to do today. And uh, it's like 9.30 right now. So, uh, yeah, let's hit it. of West Stockbridge. A little sleepy town. Pretty cool old building. old books. Oh, it's all 
typewriters. Second floor. It's pretty neat. Birds up on the ledge. It's <laughs> pretty. <laughs> 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 And they're on the fourth floor. That's <laughs> pretty just, cool. And all the dust flying around. <laughs> there. An old grist mill, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the Shakers had it for until they died out, uh, huh. which is about to happen. If you in the bathroom, what used to be the bathroom <laughs> is is now a little a, a little movie theater. What? Yeah. Hey, uh, let's see if I can find the on button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And. Yeah. push button and yeah. it, it's it's a, a video that's made by I, I think it's a the Toronto library about what books do at night oh, nice. that's pretty cool oh that's neat <laughs> excuse me oh that's cool does it work yes yeah, from 1907 yeah okay. uh, got it cranked up take off the brake Take away your blues. What? It's awesome. So in 1907, they had no electricity, so yeah. they had no potentiometers or ways to uh, to turn up the volume, except. And then it'll go for it. It'll go for one uh, That's good. Spin. These are. We bought a collection from a from a uh, book hoarder. And yeah. it was in a barn. Yeah, we're in the Berkshires, so one of our stops is going to have to be the Norman Walker Museum. So that's where we are today. The museum housed the world's largest collection of original Norman Rockwell art, including paintings, illustrations, and personal memorabilia. Welcome to the Norman Rockwell Museum. The Norman Rockwell Museum is a must-visit destination for anyone who loves American art. Located in the heart of the Berkshires, the museum is home to the world's largest collection of original Norman Rockwell art. As we stroll through the galleries, we're transported to a different time and place. Each painting tells a story and captures the essence of small town America in the 20th century. It's clear that Norman Rockwell had a deep understanding of American culture and society. His art is a reflection of the values and experiences that make our country unique.
And of course, no visit to the Norman Walker Museum would be completed without a stop at the gift shop. Here, you can find a variety of souvenirs and memorabilia to take home with you. The museum also boasts beautiful outdoor spaces where visitors can enjoy the stunning Brookshire landscape from the museum's porch. You can also take in the rolling hills and lush forests that inspired Rockwell's art. It's like 20 bucks to get in, um, but yeah, it's a cool stop here in Stockbridge. Um, yeah, pretty little walking paths around here. I didn't do the studio tour. I didn't have time today to do it, but um, maybe next time, but I think I'm good. <laughs> That's gonna do it for our stop here at Norman Walker Museum. Thanks for joining me on this journey through American art and culture. Well, it's time to get traveling. If you're in the area, it's a must stop. To me, nothing says the Berkshires like a stop and viewing some Norman Rockwell paintings. Let's go check out Stockbridge. Downtown Stockbridge. Yep. Doesn't look too bad. A little busy downtown, but we'll take a walk around and see what we can find. Nice old church. Nice old church. Not much down this way. <laughs> I guess we'll uh, head back. It's not a big downtown. That looks like a square block area. A couple little trendy stores, but uh, we'll check it out. Maybe there's a cool, something cool to buy. I need a sticker, I need to find my sticker. This is a church built in 1862.
That was a good beer, good dinner at the uh, Red Lion Inn. Huh. Let's go to the next one. Well, that was our time in here in uh, Stockbridge. We had some good, uh, had a good burger and a good IPA. That's for you, Travis Robert. Um, but. Uh, now it's to uh, continue on to the next destination and see what we can find. All right. Yeah, let's go explore some more. Had to stop here, just not really much here. I just wanted to, there's a cool build, old building here on the side. Um, Rising Paper Company. Um, yeah, just a cool old building. So I had to drive by and just check it out. Not much here, but just a neat building. Here we go. So a little stop here on the side of the road. Uh, route, going up Route 112. Um, um, yeah, Westfield River and the Nightfield Dam. Had to stop and look at it. Pretty cool. Water looks a little bit low right now. Hmm. Sure, in the winter and the spring it gets pretty full, but right now it's nothing really going over. I don't see anything. But it's a pretty cool road, though. This is a 112. Um, yeah. So you got the uh, Westfield River and the Knightville Dam, and uh, yeah, nice little scenic overlook. I can't really see the river down there, but it's not bad. Not too many cars. All right, it's getting late. So let's get back in the car and uh, finish this drive. We still got a little ways to go, but um, it's a pretty cool drive. And uh, yeah, that's a nice looking dam, but it's not, the water's kind of low right now, but yeah, it's a pretty road. Um, can't beat this drive. Can't beat it. All right. 
let's do this. Uh, driving along the road here, uh, heading north on 112, and uh, just saw this on the side of the road. Let's see what it was. Looks like they got these uh, trees all tapped for maple. You see this? Collect it, usually spring, right? I think it's April, but yeah, you can see all these maple trees. That's cool. All right, so uh, yeah, that's gonna be a wrap on another day. Um, it's been a good day here uh, exploring the Berkshires, um, but it's starting to get dark here and uh, we're gonna head back and get some rest. It's been, been a long day. Uh, it's been a fun day, seen a lot, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, from here, I'm not sure if we go to what we're gonna do next, but in the next couple videos, we'll be heading up north to the uh, White Mountains, start seeing some of the leaves change color. So, um, yeah, that's the plan there. Still wanna go north to Salem and Gloucester area, and maybe hit a couple trips along the main coast, but uh, definitely wanna head up to the White Mountains. Uh, time to see the foliage, fo foliage change, the leaves change. And uh, yeah. Um, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. All right.